TCP/IP is the name given to a suite of protocols designed for the internet but suitable for any internet work. When the TCP/IP protocol suite was developed, although the concept of layering was important, the emphasis was on producing practical protocols. As a consequence, the TCP/IP reference model reflected these protocols rather than the protocols being produced according to a specific reference model, as was the case with OSI protocols. The application layer, as shown in the figure, offers standard services to application software running on systems. The transport layer provides end-to-end communication over an internet work. The internet work layer deals with the functions associated with specific networks. The main protocol in this layer is IP Internet Protocol, and the other protocols in the figure for this layer support the operation of IP. The network layer is the host to network layer deals with the reliable transfer of data between nodes in a communication network. Protocols in this layer are not strictly within the TCP IP protocol suite because they are controlled by other standards bodies and have uses outside the Internet context. Applications use easy to remember names for hosts on the internet, but before sending any data to a host, an application in the source host must translate its name for the destination host to the numerical network address. The domain name system makes it possible to assign domain names to groups of internet users in a meaningful way, independent of each user's physical location. The Internet is divided into domains, and an authority in each domain is responsible for allocating names. However, the domains may be divided into subdomains, and the responsibility of allocating subdomain names may be delegated to other authorities. In this way, the names form a tree structure, as shown in the figure. The full names of hosts are written as a sequence of words separated by full stops, and each word refers to a domain or subdomain. For example, elearning.uom.ac.mu is the full name of a host called elearning. In the subdomain, uom, which is itself within the larger subdomain called ac for academic. The top level domain for this host is mu, which is a geographical domain name. Hypertext Transfer Protocol HTTP, is an application-level protocol for distributed, collaborative, hypermedia information systems. In very basic terms, the web is an application of the Internet for accessing resources wherever they are located. Each resource on the web is found through a name called a Uniform Resource Locator URL. A URL consists first of the name of the scheme for communicating with the resource at the application layer, that is, HTTP, followed by a scheme-specific part. In the actual URL, the names in angled brackets indicate that values are inserted. The host is the domain name, as given in the domain name system of the Internet. The port is optional and is described as a way of identifying the different applications that may be running in an application layer. The path in a URL identifies the name of the resource in the host's filing system. The search part is optional and is used when the resource is a search engine. If no port value is given, then a default value is used. IP version 4 is the main TCP IP protocol in the Internet work layer of the TCP IP reference model. It supports a connectionless service between hosts in an Internet work, and its principal function is to forward the protocol data units, called datagrams, in IP terminology. This is achieved by each datagram carrying a unique address of its destination. The figure shows the format of an IP version 4 datagram. Version number, that is, 
4 bits, identifies the version of IP that sent this datagram. Header length, which is 4 bits, contains the number of 32 bit words in the header. Type of service, which is 8 bits, identifies the service requirements, such as reliable data transfer. Total length gives the total number of bytes in the header and user data field. Identification provides a means of identifying datagrams that carry parts of the same data from the transport layer. DF is the don't fragment flag, which indicates that a datagram should not be fragmented. MF is the more fragments flag, which indicates that a datagram is not the last fragment. Fragment offset indicates where the fragment belongs when measured in multiples of 8 bytes. The first fragment has an offset of 0. Time to live gives a way of indicating how long a datagram should exist in an internetwork. Protocol identifies the protocol that is using IP or TCP or UDP. Header checksum contains a simple form of cyclic redundancy check for a datagram but is applied only to the header information. Source address contains the network address of the host which sent the datagram. Destination address contains the network address of the host which should receive the datagram. Options provides a way of identifying optional features associated with security or routing. User data contains the data from the higher layer. The asynchronous transfer mode ATM, protocol architecture is designed to support the transfer of data with a range of guarantees for quality of service. The user data is divided into small, fixed-length packets called cells and transported over virtual connections. The figure shows the reference model for ATM. The first thing to notice is that, as well as layers, the model has planes. The functions for transferring user data are located in the user plane. The functions associated with the control of connections are located in the control plane. And the coordination functions associated with the layers and planes are located in the management planes. The three-dimensional representation of the ATM protocol architecture is intended to portray the relationship between the different types of protocol. The horizontal layers indicate the encapsulation of protocols through levels of abstraction as one layer is built on top of another, whereas the vertical planes indicate the functions that require coordination of the actions taken by different layers. An advantage of dividing the functions into control and user planes is that it introduces a degree of independence in the definition of the functions. The protocols for transferring user data, that is, user plane, are separated from the protocols for controlling connections, which is control plane. In this section, a review of the ATM layers will be briefly described. The ATM physical layer is divided into two sublayers the transmission convergence sublayer and the physical medium sublayer. Functions of the transmission convergence sublayer include generating and receiving cells and generating and verifying the cyclic redundancy check in the header error control field. The functions of the ATM physical medium sublayer are associated with the transmission of bits over a specific physical medium. The primary functions of the ATM layer are associated with the routing and switching of ATM cells. Because ATM cells are packets, the switches are packet switches, and the switching operation can be called forwarding. The basic function of the ATM adaptation layer is to convert the user data supplied by higher layers into 48-byte blocks of data. The ATM adaptation layer is divided into two sublayers, the convergence sublayer and the segmentation and reassembly sublayer. The convergence sublayer provides services to higher layers through a set of protocols. 
the segmentation and reassembly sublayer separates the messages from the convergent sublayer into ATM cells. Each of the two sublayers adds some protocol information which is transported in the payload of ATM cells. IP protocol supports a connectionless service and the ATM and TCP protocols support a connection-oriented service. The list of the advantages and disadvantages of connectionless and connection-oriented services is given in the table shown.